Hello friends, today's Sunday, uh, my day off, I'm in Cambridge, uh, hopefully I'm loading tomorrow, uh, I was told that uh, auction thing is uh, should be ready to go, but I'm going to check with uh, with um, with the reception over there by phone before I go again, and I'll be going to New Jersey. Now since I'm not tracking today, I thought uh, a couple of... Uh, I've been getting some um, questions a couple of times and uh, one of my viewers and I want to thank the kind gentleman in California sent me this uh, GoPro uh, mount because I got a third party mount and that one was like real shaky so hopefully this one I tried this one before uh, but they're pretty much the same but I think this one is stronger than the one I'm using now, so I'm gonna hook it up. And a while ago, uh, you know, I'm trying to improve the quality of my videos, right? And you saw me a while ago, I picked up this mic and then actually did not work. I couldn't get it to work as a directional shotgun microphone. And I returned it. And then a few weeks uh, later, a guy left a comment on my channel saying that for this mic to work, it comes with a cable, right, that you hook up into the camera, but uh, the, for this mic to work properly, he said you need this. This is an optional accessory, it's a Rode SC7, and this is a requirement for smartphones only, but this guy says that you have to, instead of the standard cable, you have to use this, this is a standard 3.5 millimeter. I'm gonna test it uh, after this and then we're gonna record uh, the the end of the video with the shotgun mic so now I'm using my GoPro um, so yeah a couple of questions don't panic guys it's not gonna be a review of uh, video accessories that you hate so much but you enjoy watching videos made with the help of, of the said accessories. So two questions. One question was, uh, one gentleman asked me to talk about my, my look at this, 20, 22 bucks, you know, I'm in the wrong business. Look at this. It's uh, less than two inches of cable, 22.99. So one guy, one request I got was to talk about the maintenance for my uh, for my truck, and um, uh, I'm doing the oil change at 150,000 kilometers. So right now I'm at 140,000. So I have 10,000 kilometers more, or 7,000 miles to go, and I use this. Um, Where's my hat? Yeah, I use this one, Mobile Delvec, right? They got a free hat. And I kind of like the Shell Rotella T6 better than the one I used before. It's also th synthetic, but it's much more expensive because um, trucks, uh, truck stops very rarely uh, stock this particular Rotella T6. They stock another Rotella, but this is the best one. This is the synthetic the T6 that I like. It's a 5W. 40 so great for you know Canadian cold winters and also great in the summer uh, And now I try this Delvac because it, it I got to see it Petro TA the price was only slightly higher than um, a Regular oil whereas with this one I have to buy I couldn't even find the uh, pails You know like bigger ones so I had to buy gallon jugs and I would buy like 10 of them and in the states they're in Canada they're like totally crazy 45 Canadian <laughs> which is like I don't know 30 US plus tax like 35 US and in, in, in the states any Walmart sells them for 20, 22 20 bucks but still I gotta buy 10 of them that's $200 US and then I have to that's almost like a lot of money in, in Canada and then I have to pay still for or the oil change right in Canada I was doing it the Mac dealer so I don't know I think I'm gonna stick with this Delvac I'll see how it performed it performed okay in the cold weather uh, I'll see how the engine 
behaves when it's hot because you know these um, emissions engines mine is a 2015 truck right they run much hotter than uh, all the trucks let's say like my international had before with the cat c15 2004 um, and so that's my plan and as far as uh, other things on the truck so i installed the seat because I, I was expecting some visitors that wanted to go with me and you know to look at the life of a trucker from the inside but that's still on hold but now I have the seat with the suspension seat right and I if, of course if you saw my videos one big expend, expense I had I had to install the uh, fenders on all the truck axles on the pusher axle and on the drives because there was too much um, bad stuff flying on the trailer and damaging the electric connections over there and corroding everything and I have that and I don't have any other plans to you know invest money in the truck because that's the beauty you know of buying um, a custom spec truck when you, you know sit down with a salesman and you spec everything on paper so the beauty of that is that you can get pretty much exactly the truck you want you know whereas uh, I I wasted so much money on that international because I bought basically someone else's truck it was a used truck right and I was changing axle ratios and uh, tra transmissions and clutch and uh, adding horsepower of, I don't know and then by the time I was done the truck was still not what I wanted and all of a sudden it became old and started falling apart so all that investment was for nothing um, but I did sell it okay for an international I sold it for 18,000 bucks US 2004 I sold it in 2010 it only had like 800,000 miles it was a, a good truck but basically don't invest into a truck a truck it's a tool it's a machine just do the maintenance that's my idea now so if you want a truck for yourself it's always best to spec I would never buy a truck from a dealer's lot you know because they always spec them wrong you know like everybody everybody is different you know what you're gonna use the truck for and that's the only time when you should be buying a truck when you know when you know the specs right and so in my case I was specking the truck for the trailer you know so first I, I had the 55 ton uh, low boy so I knew what I was I would be hauling and that's the best way like otherwise you know you if you don't know what you're gonna be doing or you just trying to buy a general truck then chances are sometime down the road is gonna prove to be a wrong truck and so that's why I don't have to invest a lot of money well I did change the axle ratio speaking of axle ratios right but it's because uh, it was not my fault it was the salesman's fault because he actually was pushing me towards 373 and I said no because it's a 13 liter engine even though they said oh it's 1860 torque and somehow you know I had my doubts so I got I said let's do 391 3.91 and then I started hauling these crazy loads you know like excavator housing weighing 86,000 pounds like my trailer is fine the trailers can uh, carry much more load like it's up gross you know 55 tons which of course you can never do with only seven axles but but the truck was kind of like dying on heels it was not enough power and that's why I had to pay what was it like 5,000 after everything but it's worth it you know I drive slower now I didn't I didn't had any hits in fuel economy because I just I kept my RPM the same because everybody's always concerned oh you're gonna burn more fuel well yeah you're gonna burn more fuel if you keep your rpm higher than before because it's all about the rpm right i just i knew what i was uh wanted to achieve i wanted to get more torque more horsepower to make it because you know it's very frustrating when you the truck cannot pull you know with this heavy weight and it takes you like half an hour to do a you know two mile slope and plus when you do an oversized load there's actually restrictions on your permit it says the truck must maintain at least I think 40 miles an hour on heels otherwise you need an escort you know like seriously so you want to be able to maintain the speed it's not just because it feels good but because 
uh, of the law requirements you know because you'll be slowing everybody down and the chance of an accident is higher so plus yeah for the driver it's very frustrating it's very tiring and stressful to sit in a truck that drives five miles per hour you know because it cannot uh, drive faster and so I think for heavy haul so my attitude now if somebody asks me would ask me or will ask me in the future for a 15 liter engine you need 3.91 x ratio for heavy haul for a 13 liter engine you need 410 or if you are in California somewhere you know fighting crazy mountains you probably even need uh, more like four wait, what's the next one 410 I think 420 something 425 but then of course you'll be driving 90 kilometers an hour 55 miles per hour all the time so that's the downside so I keep my RPM low so I didn't lose anything in uh, terms of fuel economy um, I just drive 59 miles an hour or 95k an hour that's my cruising speed because that's 1450 rpm and that's the top end of the best rpm for fuel economy for this truck according to mac mac truck and so yeah so i did fenders right i did uh, i changed the extra ratio now i will be doing the uh, oil change and i you know sometimes i want to add uh, some air horns because this is just not serious i have only two air horns on the top but to add those you need i don't want to drill the roof you know have the shop drill with the roof but maybe i'll install something i just want a slightly louder air horns uh because you know if you watch my videos i always into these mufflers you know and some guys said oh you like noise no not noise i like a performance uh, you know sound and my mac sounds great like this dual exhaust there but it's like pseudo dual exhaust actually maybe that's another thing i'm gonna change because the i was looking the other day at this pipe and on the very back there's like pipe that's coming from the engine it's a single pipe and then it splits into two and that connection the connection between the main pipe and these two pipes is like this 90 degrees you know like it's not a like a y like what i have on my car now it's a very crude you know 90 degree design with straight angles so i'm pretty sure that if i would go to that uh, fine muffler shop where i did my uh, muffler upgrade for the mazda it's that shop in hamilton my favorite uh, muffler shop and they work in big trucks I'm pretty sure they can do this it's just that it's very expensive like that thing that Y part uh, they just need to cut this and install the Y and I guarantee it like the airflow will improve by probably like easy 15% you know so that would increase the power a little bit and um, because that's what they do right in, in race cars they try to avoid all these sharp corners because that stops the air it's like you know it's science right so that I'm, if I have extra money, that's what I uh, I might do. You know, change that uh, connector on the exhaust pipe. It's right under the cab in the back. I'll show you guys once I get to do it, and probably install a like a row of four or maybe six train horns on the back um, wall of the sleeper. You know, so that when you're driving and somebody doesn't doesn't know how to merge, you just give them a hint. You know. So, <laughs> okay, so that's about the maintenance. I hope yeah, I satisfied some uh, hunger of, uh, uh, for that kind of information. Now, people often ask me, how long are we talking here? 14 minutes, all right. Uh, people often ask me how to get into heavy hole. And for everybody it's different. So I decided I'm gonna just briefly, I talked about this before and I have it in my video, but um, I'll tell you guys how I got it into this, right? So first of all, it's it's best to do it in steps. And that's what I did. I, I, I had experience with chains and binders a little bit when I was, uh, I, I, I drove a tow truck. And not like a regular tow truck, but it was like a five ton tow truck with a, they call them rollback or tilt and load bed like hydraulic bed and I, I often dealt with a small uh, construction machinery you know like bobcats 
kind of like rental equipment that construction guys rent you know and then they would send us to pick it up at the construction site so and there was quite often there was nobody there and that's actually that's how i i started how i learned to drive all these i remember the first one was this cute little excavator you know like the size of this cab you know one of those mini excavators with tiny tracks it's like a toy but, but it was so cute we know you could you can do the same thing like as a, with the big excavator except that the bucket is like this you know and they sent me to pick this up and uh you know it's easier it's like a tank right just you know i think that one had yeah the, the levers on the floor and they just and it had the rubber rubber tracks and so i put my you know bed like on the on the truck it goes like and then you tilt it like this at the ground like at maybe 30 degree angle and then just drove the excavator and then the bed goes like this and i put some chains on it that was my 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 first lesson that was like 2000 i think 2001 and i was doing that towing thing like for a couple of years and that's how i also learned how to back because often i would have a car in the back and that's sometimes some somebody's asking me how to learn how to back and i'm not kidding when i say just you should if you don't have a pickup truck just rent a pickup truck with a small trailer like those small pickup trailers and just go somewhere to like a shopping center if you don't have a room near where you live and just try back backing of course it's it's different because it's a much smaller vehicle but works great and that's how i learned because i couldn't pass that backing test right i failed like i think twice but then the third time i finally passed the the the, the driving test like i did fine on the knowledge test you know the written test I scored always like almost 100%, maybe like I made my one mistake, but driving, like backing. And so you, yeah, you do it step by step, like I got D license, which is a straight truck, right? Then I got DZ, which Z is Z is air brakes, and then I got AZ. And then I started driving, I drove a drive and I pulled a drive and trailer for a couple of years already after this towing. That was 2005, I started with Challenger, then 2007 I bought this Yellow International. Uh, 2004 truck and that's when I switched to McKinnon transport in Guelph Ontario and right away I said I want to do flatbed and step deck and I didn't have my trailer so I pulled there uh, first drive in a couple of weeks and then I they, they trained me for like three days we were we were you know listening to a guy talking about all these rules and regulations and then just put us in the yard and showed us how to secure i think it was some like garbage cans on the old flatbed trailer and the guy just said okay you guys go ahead i'll come back in, in a couple of hours and check on you he just showed us how to secure stuff you know and so i did went through some training basic training on the job and then i started pulling the flatbed 48 foot 10 one spread tandem fixed tandem that was my favorite trailer it was so light so easy to pull and then I got my 48 foot step deck. And this is the foundation that you need for heavy haul. You know, I really don't advise people to jump into heavy haul from, from like a reef or a drive in. You know, you need to learn this. Even this is not enough, just chains. So the first, first step is this uh, flatbed and step deck loads, right? You gotta learn to work with chains and binders. But the second, more importantly, after you learn this and you start uh, you know you feel confident you know how to secure how many chains to put on you know um, you know how to use common sense to see which way the load might move you know um, so basically you have to use your head right many people think that truckers are stupid but actually we have to think a lot uh, when especially like flatbed stem deck guys when securing a load you have to look at it from different angles to see you know what the bad scenario might be sometime down there down a few miles down the road because all loads are different right when it's just boxes it's easy in the drive in but and so the next step that's what i did uh is oversized loads oversize and overweight and when i was with uh, mckinnon uh i think maybe i did like one in three years uh because they didn't just have they didn't have those types of loads and maybe they were giving them to company guys company drivers and then i left and i started with landstar with the same 48 foot uh trailer and I, did, I made so many mistakes about specking the trailer by the way i 
first of all I should have gotten a 53 step deck because then you need you need 40 feet at minimum at the, the bottom deck and for some reason I decided to have a fixed tandem with a five foot spacing which is totally crazy you need on a step deck especially you need 10 one uh, if it's a tandem 10 one spread and one axle must move like it must have a slider right so this way you can go to Western Canada you can go to California and then I would have some ramps like now right if I were buying it again and I would probably install like at least four container locks because with a step deck you often do containers and the uh, like 40 foot C container 20 foot C container and these container locks come really handy they save a lot of headaches you know it's much faster to secure a container with locks of course they're expensive and they add weight but they also make the trailer stronger because they have to reinforce the floor over there where they put that lock and so that was my next step right so first I learned the chains and binders then I learned how to do oversized loads at Landstar I did lots of oversized loads and uh, then I got a 53 uh, flatbed more oversized loads and then I got 53 three axle step deck that was my last trailer before the actual heavy haul and on that trailer that was like the perfect bridge trailer to overhaul because it had three axles so I could do not just oversize legal weight loads but I was doing oversize uh, overweight loads like uh, actually they were not oversized but they were overweight like I remember one case when I was in British Columbia and um, this mining company they were building uh, like some kind of a tunnel and this was a, a small locomotive that works inside the tunnel on a like narrow rails narrow narrow track but it was pretty heavy it was like close to 60,000 pounds you know so I was very proud to be hauling that and so that's what I need and so that's my experience so you, you do it step by step and after you do a bunch of oversized and overweight loads then you kind of then you're ready just to go to the next step and probably it's a good idea not to jump right away into a 55 ton low boy you know lots of guys start with a 35 ton uh, but I did it because you know I had pretty much lots of experience with uh, with chaining and, and binders right and uh, still it was a learning curve but maybe more on how to handle the trailer like how to unhook and rehook that was kind of like difficult but the most dangerous part about this low boy thing is the height because you know on a step deck and flatbed trailer you rarely uh hold loads that are too tall you know if it's like 10 feet tall for a step deck or eight foot tall for a flatbed but here it's always a challenge because things tend to be much taller than on other trailers and if you're not careful you can uh, damage you know bridges you can hit some power lines you know it's it's really dangerous and that's why at Landstar I remember they had a policy that you have to call the heavy haul department and ask and get their permission to uh, to buy a, a low boy trailer you know and at first they didn't even allow me and then they said okay you have to show us you know like five six ten I don't remember the number but oversized loads you know how many oversized loads and especially tall loads you did and overweight loads and then I think after one year uh, they allowed me to do this and then I couldn't find financing and then after uh, when, when did I buy this 2014 yeah so I joined them in 20, 2010 and in 2014 I finally found a way to uh, to get um, a trailer and I got a trailer directly from a manufacturer that's always I think the best way just to bypass all these dealers especially if you're in the States like I'm Canadian right for me it was difficult to find financing I found local financing to get the trailer you know from the States but it was lots of headaches when you have to take the unregistered trailer across the border but if you're in the States that's what I would recommend just bypass all these dealers all these markups and just try to find your way and straight to the plant because not all plants but the most quick on their feet plants they would have a department that sells them directly 
you know and you can save a bunch of money this way so okay so this was uh kind of like short for me 25 minutes long video so we talked about maintenance my plans for the truck and we talked about how to how i got into heavy haul and probably how you can get two and now my video is too long uh, i don't have a i don't want to uh burden you guys i wanted to try the sound on this but we're gonna do it tomorrow probably when i go and load um, that uh, machine at the auction tomorrow so i'll test everything today so i got this i'm gonna set up the camera on this hook up the mic and okay i'll just show you the mic but it's the same one i tested except that when i went to return it the guy had no clue about this that you need this cable right so he just okay we'll refund you the money so if you if you would have told me about this about this uh, cable so it's over here anyway i'm not gonna even disconnect it i'm gonna keep this dead cat on but it's a road uh, road micro uh mic so that's what i'll try to be using now for better audio so you guys don't hear too much wind noise anyway so thanks for watching uh stay tuned tomorrow for uh that road machine move from Ontario to New Jersey. Sergey's out. So this is what it looks like.